I would like to introduce Matt Sheehan, our keynote. Matt Sheehan is the founder of WebMap Solutions, focused on helping organizations, big and small, understand and use GIS to solve business problems. Born in England, Matt holds a Bachelor of Science and a Master's of Science in Geography. Matt works on both the technical and business sides of the GIS fence. He is a prolific blogger, writing typical, topical, often humorous articles on the new exciting world of GIS. Please welcome Matt Sheehan. Well, I, thanks to Kerry and Mike for inviting me. Um, very glad to be here. Um, I chose a pretty grand title for this, uh, this talk. Is this the dawn of a new era for GIS? Um, let's see where we go with this conversation. Um, get this clicker right. So about me, I, uh, as Kerry said, I'm a, I'm a, fundamentally I'm a geographer. Um, London University in England, I did a physical geography degree, came over here, did a master's degree in, uh, in GIS. Um, I was, I've always been a passionate geographer. I've always thought geography is an underused uh, subject, and those geographers in the room probably relate to me by saying that. It was always a, it was always a subject that we went to be teachers or become lecturers. Uh, we didn't really apply the technology. That, we didn't really apply our spatial skills to solve problems. Um, and it always frustrated me that. Um, and when I discovered GIS when I first moved to America, I suddenly realized there was this tool that we could start using to solve real problems, to apply our own skills and not have people ask us, you know, you must know the capital of the world. That was always the thing that bothered me the most. So I'm a Brit. I'm based in Salt Lake City. It's kind of interesting, I think, that um, this conference seems to like Brits uh, doing keynotes. Um, I think uh, Chris Sheldrick a couple of years ago in Grand Junction from What Three Words was on the stage. I know Steve Coast's been here from OpenStreetMap, who now works for What Three Words. Peter Batty, I know, is, I don't know if he's in the audience here, but Peter's been on the stage. So you, you guys must like the Brits, I don't know. Um, you don't realize we're trying to get our colony back, that's why we're here, but with another. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm a principal at WebMap Solutions. We do a lot of. Um, um, web GIS work, uh, to use some ESRI terminology, but a lot of our focus is on, is on web GIS. Um, mobile and, and, and web uh, solutions is where we put a lot of our time and, and focus. So um, we're kind of a forward-looking company trying to solve business problems. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute. I, I'm a prolific blogger. Um, let me go to this next slide. Some of the blog titles. If you don't read the blog, um, these are some of the titles that... Uh, that I come up with sometimes. Um, I do like to write about the business of GIS, and I, I try to step back from it and take a sort of a big picture view of it. So there's some of the things I talk about. I mean, I just pulled out some titles there. Imagineering is something that Disney came up with, but I like that idea of, of GIS imagineering. Are you doing that? Um, the, the ugly duckling idea of data. If you want to see Danny Kaye singing the ugly duckling, I was going to start singing it on the stage. I won't. That article's about data and... and uh, and uh, there, there's a good video in it. And we talk about, I talk about offline mobile. Got, I, get in, I get in a little bit of hot water sometimes with some of the blog posts. The GIS sucks one got me in a little bit of uh, trouble. Don't judge a book by its title is what I would say about that one. What did the Brits do with Brexit? Oh, my gosh. There's, a, there's, a, there's an article about Brexit. Eddie the Eagle is one of the greatest sporting heroes that the, the Brits ever produced. I don't know if you've seen the film of Eddie the Eagle. We wrote out, there's an article about that. And then Spotted Dick is actually a dessert in England. So, and that's kind of the thrust of that article. Me telling you that is the thrust of that article. So, so read the blog. If you don't read the blog, come and read the blog. I try and make it amusing but topical and interesting. So, uh, you know. Um, so I've, I've done three slides there, all of words. I hate, I hate words on slides. So that's the last real wordy slide you're going to see. Um, I've also got... I'll come up with a few uh, key points as I go through this, which will have a star next to them. Anyone that's fallen asleep or on their phone, I'll, maybe I'll raise my voice like in advertising to catch your attention. So you can sleep through the other bits, but I will make you listen to the, the, the points I'm going to make as we go through. So let's go back in time. Um, that's actually a picture from, some people may know that, that's from H.G. Wells' time machine. Rod Taylor, who was an Australian actor, died last year, actually. Terribly wooden film, but I, it's a great book. So let's go back in time. Let's go back to the 90s. I, I arrived in America in the 90s. <laughs> and, uh, 
And we were in a sleepy world then. It was a beautiful world of AML and Avenue. And we were, I learned ArcInfo at my graduate degree. And you know, we lived in our little, little area doing our own little thing and on, on desktops. And the web came out. And uh, we started having, I actually wrote a, my, my graduate degree is right on a map objects IMS project. So that was when I had hair. Um, so it was one of the earliest Esri products that allowed us to, to put, put maps, GIS on the web. Very simple, but curious on the web. Arc IMS came out, a, gr a great big step. But we kind of lived in our own little world then. And it was all going smoothly, and then that happened. Um, boom. 2005. Google Maps came out, and our world kind of got blown up a bit there. Um, my memory of it was we finally got lots of data that's free, and we've got um, the ability to very simply put points on maps and do some very simple things with maps, and slippy maps, slippy maps. I always say to people, people say to me, what is a slippy map? Well, do you remember the old RKMS days, those of, of you who are a bit older, where you pan, a new map appeared. I, I, don't get me wrong, I loved ArcIMS, it was fantastic. But you had to wait for it to load, and it was a new map each time, and you go back to the server, it generated a picture, and there you go. Slippy maps to the tiles. You know, we could, we could just seamlessly move across and zoom in, and what a wonderful thing that was. When I saw Slippy Maps, I was just so blown away by it. So that was a big boom for us. When, when Google Maps came out, it was a big boom for the GIS industry generally. You know, Esri and everybody reacted to that, and, we, and it really jumped things forward, I think. Um, so that was a big moment. Um, and then another boom happened. I, I, I kind of put a boom on this one, even though it wasn't quite as dramatic as the launch of, of Google Maps. I think mobile and cloud computing has, is completely changing our industry. I mean, Google Maps changed things in a certain direction on, with web technology. Mobile and cloud computing is, has just completely changed our industry. Um, so I put a boom on there because it it's been a gradual, a gradual thing. But I mean, I'll be honest with you, I set up Web Map Solutions because of that. So I set up Web Map just because of that because I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, we're not any longer this peripheral technology. We are now front and center. Um, and I put location tech there. I really kind of mean location. Everyone suddenly realized that location was something they wanted to ask questions about because they're moving around with a mobile computer and they've got access to data anywhere, anytime, any place. So, people started asking where questions. Now, I, I've struggled with this idea of how, what, what is it people are really doing? Is it a location thing? You know, I say to my wife, if I say location, what does that mean to you? She means, well, where I currently am is what my wife thinks about. She's not a GIS person. It's really a where question. And you'll see me keep talking about this in this, in this, in this session here. People are asking where questions. Um, and that's really what we do. We answer where questions. That's our, that's our job is to answer where questions. Well, we'll explore that a bit more as we go through. I put two great examples. Two of the most popular apps out there are where question apps. Uber is, is, is one that's come out that, you know, where is the cab that's about to pick me up? The cab driver, where is the person I'm about to pick up? It's map-based. It's all a location-based application. It's sticky. People love it. It's wonderful. It's simple. But it's our technology that's driving it. Pokemon Go. My kids were doing this all the time. I was like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, well, they're doing it over there. We'd be driving. You'd see these people, these huddles of people. And I'd say, are they doing Pokemon Go as well? And they'd be saying, yeah, they're all doing po Everyone's good doing Pokemon Go. And I said to my kids, what is this Pokemon Go thing? And why do you like it? And I asked my, my, my boy that, and he said, it's, it's basically the locational aspect of it, Dad. We're trying to find these pokey stops. And, and I was like, so you really are attracted by that, the idea that you can find stuff in space. Yeah, that's what we like it. They don't use it anymore because the makers of it took away a locational aspect to it. You can't po find pokey stops apparently anymore. They took a, a very important aspect of the, of the application away, which is a location aspect. My kids don't touch it anymore. And I said to them, why? And they said, for that, exactly that reason. So there are lots and lots of where questions being asked. So who's asking these questions? This is a kind of a simplistic diagram. We, we really talk in there about consumers. You know, there's, there's a, the consumer market is, is exploding. People are using mobile devices, cloud computing. You know, there's lots of advances in, in the consumer area. If you read stats on 
maps and locations. Lots of apps have got that stuff built in. We've got GPS, we need to know where we are, we need to know what's around us, we need to ask where questions. So there's a big consumer market. Traditional sectors, most of us in this room, is really the traditional part of asking where questions. You know, it's public sector, it's people who have worked with GIS for a long time. That's the, that's the traditional part of the, of, the, of the marketplace, and that's really where we, a lot of us kind of sit. The third group, and I've kind of, kind of called it the commercial sector, I really mean the non-traditional area. That's what's beginning to explode. Lots now of people are now asking where questions. You know, again, on the commercial side of things, there are more and more people saying, you know, I'm running a business, we've got people out in the field, I, they've got questions for us and they're where questions. How do we answer those where questions? That's a challenge. That's a challenge we're all facing. Is it, well, particularly organisations like mine, we get approaches from people who have no idea what GIS is, but they have a where question. How do I answer that where question? Help me answer that where question. So we are really in a time where we're moving from... Um, these where questions are proliferating across the board. They're proliferating. We're moving from a little niche in our own little corner, nerding it away with just spatial stuff, to mass market. We are in the middle of that. And uh, we're in an interesting churning time at the moment as this is going on. So uh, I'll raise my voice for that one. <laughs> where questions are proliferating. So let's talk about the technology. Um, I'm using location technology here. Obviously, this is an Esri diagram. Um, the Esri platform is now with us. Uh, some huge advances within, within the Esri world. Um, some fantastic advances, to be honest with you. Um, but we're seeing a lot of change in the industry. There's new, there's new players coming into the field as, as well. Um, I mean, anyone that went to the UC this year saw some interlopers around the UC that were in the same industry within the spatial industry, not necessarily, I'm, I'm not going to say, I don't, I'm not, not convinced they're competitors to Esri, but they, they're, in the, they're in the space, they're coming in, they're making noise, they're answering where questions. So we've got a lot of change going on, a lot of expansion, a lot of evolution. This I, I spent a little while thinking about this, this slide. Um, I, I like the picture, I love the background, I think... Uh, I've always wanted to try to give an excuse to actually use this picture, and I've finally found it. Um, so I've got, two, I've got two arrows. I've got one pointing to a GIS platform and one pointing down a, a mapping platform. Are they the same thing? Um, I don't think they are. Um, I think you can talk about a spectrum. And again, it's kind of one of the themes of, of as I was thinking about this talk. You've got a spectrum of where questions. You've got simple where questions. You've got complex where questions. Simple where questions are maybe a point on a map. Maybe that's a Google Maps type solution. Maybe that's some of the newer, newer companies that are coming in to the business. Um, they're answering simple where questions. Um, but so why would I need a GIS? What does a GIS do for me? It's still something that answers where questions. A GIS now answers a wider spectrum of where questions. And again, I'll point at the, the, the Esri platform. With ArcGIS Online came out, it's much easier now to publish a map. It's much easier now to answer where questions. So I think that GIS, and again, as is not the only GIS organization out there, but GIS has now become this tool for us to answer a much wider spectrum of where questions. So who would want to use a, a GIS? Well, we probably all do because we work for organizations that have simple and complex where questions. If you only have a simple where question, you're not necessarily going to need a GIS. So I think the marketplace is becoming this... Again, we could spend more time thinking about and talking about that. It, it's, it's answering that spectrum of where questions, complex, simple. The GIS really answers the whole spectrum. And we've now moved GIS from, from being complicated to being easier to access, easier to use, easier to answer those questions. So, um, so how complex is the where question? My next big thing is many new ways to answer where questions, and there are. Within, within the Esri world, there are other organizations that are coming into the world of, 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 of releasing platforms, um, solutions which can answer those where questions. So we're in a really interesting time where things are changing more, where questions are being asked, asked and more players are coming into the market, and those that are there are expanding their offering. So here's an important question. You can tell I've got to think about gorillas, can't you? I think that's the second one that's in these slides. Um, so is GIS now simple? You know, is it, is it a simple thing? Can anyone just pick up a GIS and start using it? 
it's something that I have people email me about and ask me about. You know, I write a blog and they'll say to me, well, I'm kind of redundant now. Uh, as a US professional, I should be probably looking for another job because everyone can do this stuff. Um, and I, and I, I've written blog posts about this. Um, yeah. You're making me laugh when you say that to me. Seriously. We are trained to, to answer where questions. That's our, that's, that's our education. That's what we've experienced. That's what we know about. Um, we are, we're special business problem solvers. That's, that's kind of what we do. Um, and again, let me spend a, a little bit of time on that one. I, I wrote a blog post which, which was entitled um, Stop Calling Me the GIS. Uh, sorry, Stop Calling Me the Mapping Guy. I got loads of, resp loads of people emailing me that. And some people saying, but I love maps. That's what I do. I I'm a mapping person. That's my job. I'm a mapping person. I don't want to be called a mapping person. I don't want to be called a mapping person. Um, I'm a business person problem solver. Business, I mean, business has that entire, you know, you think about a private, a commercial business, a real estate company, but we're all, we all work for organizations that have problems we need to solve. But we're the mapping guys. What is wrong with that picture? We're the mapping guys. So I got a guy, I got a, one of the guys that works for me is a, an MBA. He's got to, you know, spend a lot of time studying. He's a business guy. He answers business questions. He's trained to answer business questions. That's his job. He is when someone asks him what he does for a living, he says, I help my business make money. I'm trained to do these clever things to make my, my business make money. I look at him and go, man, he's the guy I turn to, to to answer business problems for me. If I've got a question, he's trained to do that stuff. If I saw some of you guys in the, in the, in the audience, what do you do? You, you might say, I'm a mapping person. If that guy said, if I said to, to Joe, you know, what do you do? with your MBA, and he said, I'm a charting person. I would be insulting him with that. I wouldn't even be describing his job. I'm a charting person. So why the heck do we call ourselves mapping people? Why are we the mapping people down the corridor? We're not the mapping people down the corridor. We are spatial business problem solvers. We are trained to solve spatial problems. Can anyone do that? No, they can't. We can do that. So. I don't want to be controversial what I'm saying here, because I do think that, that, that technology has become a little easier to use, but we are ever more valuable, never been more valuable, because we think spatially. We understand how to answer a where question. Not everyone can do that. They're trained, MBAs are trained to use particular tools to solve business problems. We're trained to use spatial tools to solve problems for our organizations. That's our role. That's our job. That's why we're so valuable. So if any of you guys wonder if you're, if you're being superseded and you're not much use anymore, you've never been more valuable. And moving forward, you're only going to get more valuable as the commercial sector starts adopting our technology, as your organizations start expanding their use of technology, and you're not the guys in the mapping department. I'm sorry if I'm in people who want to just pat Matt, who came with me here, says, I, I like being called a mapping guy. I don't want to be called a mapping guy. Don't call me that. My business is not a mapping business. We solve business problems spatially. That's our job. And that's what, we, that's what I've spent 20 years doing, and that's why I busted my guts getting a master's degree. Um, this is another thing. This is kind of an odd, 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 doesn't really work with the flow of this presentation necessarily, this, but this is a really important um, picture, I think, this one. Um, now, some of you use business systems, you know, you use BI systems, you use enterprise uh, systems and ERPs and you know, asset management systems, CRMs. That's the world of, of MBAs. That's, that's people who do MBAs. They, they come into businesses and they solve business problems. They apply all these, use all these technologies to do that stuff. The missing piece of this is GIS. It's not used. It's a mapping tool. GIS answers where questions for businesses. GIS integrates with these systems. GIS answers those things that these systems can't answer. GIS is the missing link. Um, and we have to apply GIS to complement these other systems. That's, that's what we do. Um, GIS is not a mapping tool. GIS is a system to solve problems using spatial concepts and spatial tools, just the same way as all those other systems are. They, they're applied in different ways. So maybe I, and I'll actually, before I move ahead on that, um, 
I should tell you about uh, a conversation I had with, um, I knew I was going to forget his name. He runs the Orange, uh, in Florida, he runs the, the Orange County GIS department. Um, and he, uh, he, 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 he sent me a, a, an email and said, I never comment on blogs, but you wrote something on your blogs and we got into conversation and I called him. And I said, tell me how you work. How does your department work? You know, you're the GIS department. And he said, well, we are a mixture of people. I said, well, tell me more about that. He said, we solve business problems. And I said, well, you know, that's pretty general. Tell me more. They were the department to solve business problems, the GIS department. I said, well, you've just got GIS staff there. No, we've got a whole mixture of problem solvers. Some people are GIS, some people know how to work with ERPs, and, you know. So they had a business, they had a team of business problem solvers together within GIS, and I, he said, we may change that title. But their whole role was to solve problems. And he said, we don't care what we use. If someone comes to us and says, and we look at it and go, okay, GIS is a tool to solve that. Well, we got the GIS people to solve that one. But they, they created this kind of department of, and there were a lot of people in the department. I think you told me there were like 20 people in the department. They, were, they solved the problems, and they had all the tools to solve the problems. And GIS, that picture with the, with the, the link of chain there, they, had, they had, didn't have that question mark there. GIS was just another one of the tools within that mix complements everything else. So, you know, problem in, solution out. And we have the tools to, 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 to do that. So the title of this one, Your Journey to Solving Business Problems with GIS. So I'm, a, I'm kind of a big picture person. I mean, as a, as a, when I was studying, physical geography was always my thing. I always wonder, why is there a wave cut platform over there? How's that formed? I always want to understand process. I'm sort of a big picture process person. And, and I kind of look at the world we live in now with the technology and think, I think process as well. I kind of think process. So solving business problems with GIS, what does that journey look like? You know, what does an actual journey to solving business problems with GIS look like? Um, do we jump straight into the technology? Is that what we should, we should be doing, jumping into the technology straight away? I fear that's what we do in general. I fear that's what we do. We jump straight into the technology. Um, a good example. So I was at a show last year, um, and I was on a booth actually um, with a with a, a, another partner. And one of their solutions engineers was next to me, and a, a, a customer came, a potential customer walked up and uh, and said to this guy, um, "I'm interested in mobile." The guy then went into a long description of Collector for ArcGIS. On and on and on and on, and I'm sitting there looking at this this potential customer's face, and you could just read his body language. It was like drooping, and he had this like you know you could almost see him sinking down and on his on, into his knees, and I could just read in his face, "Let me get away from this person." It was like, "Let me get away from this person," and I found that really interesting. I I, I observed it without you know just just from a distance, just watching what happened and and the thing, but the focus of the conversation was on the technology. And we do it. We do the technology thing all the time. We talk technology because we're nerdy technology people. It's nothing about the technology anymore. It's about the problem. So I've got this slide. I was kind of debating what, whether to, you know, what to do with this title here. I take a systematic approach. Really what I'm talking about is start with a problem, not with the technology. Forget the technology. Push your technology down the road. Forget it. It's not about technology. We're not selling technology. We're selling a solution to problems or solutions to problems. That's, that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to sell technology. We're not trying to push technology. We're trying to solve problems. And I think to be successful in solving problems, you need to have some kind of a structure, some kind of framework. Um, as a company, we work with lots of different organizations. We work with, with cities, we work with counties, we work with uh, private organizations, banks, we work with big utilities. We get lots of problems that come into us, lots of conversations. Where do those conversations usually start? Usually it's a phone call that comes in to us and they say, we, we need a mobile app bill, for example. Or we, usually it's an app, usually it's some kind of an app that they need. We need a web application, we need this, we need that. It starts with the technology. And, and if you're, historically, we would have continued down that path of, okay, let's describe to us that application you need. What's it meant to do? Da, 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 da. We started like, like that down there in the conversation, and, and we're all guilty of this. You know, within our own organizations, we're all guilty of staying on the technology and just moving from the technology down. 
That's not good enough. That's not going to help people. So we've kind of put in place through, it, through our experiences what I, what I would call a loose framework of steps to go through. Every, th every problem, that every conversation we have is different. But to have a framework to build in from, to move from a problem to a solution, we think is important. Um, so we built, we, we've kind of gone through this process of treating every inquiry, every conversation within this kind of framework in our own minds. Okay, these are the steps we need to go through to be successful in solving this problem. The first one is shut up and listen. Again, there's another blog post. Shut up and listen. I like that. Shut up and listen. Don't blab. Don't talk. Listen. What does someone need to do? If they come to you and say, we need this in our department. We need this application. Why? Ask them the question, why? What is the problem you're trying to solve with that? Step them back. Don't, keep, don't go to level three and keep going down. Step them right out of it and go, okay, let's look at the, let's look at the big picture and ask you, what, why in your department do you need this application? What are you trying to solve? And when you start digging into that, the problem, more often than not, you'll find the problem they think they had, they didn't have. Um, more often than not, they'll go, yeah, we've got all these things we need to get done. Let's focus on one of those things. Let's not try and solve everything at one time. Let's solve one thing. What's the key pain point you're struggling with at the moment that you need that application? Or not, as the case may be. So start at the problem. Don't blab on about collector or whatever it is. Collector may be the, the right solution, but start at the problem. Talk to them about the problem. Understand. Have them understand. You understand. They understand. We all understand. Listen to them. Guide them. Visioning. This is, I call it visioning. We've kind of internally kind of spoken about, tell us the story. Tell us the story. Um, I'll give you an example of, of, of one that, uh, that we uh, have just been dealing, working with. So we had a, a customer that came to us who had a mixture of, of Esri technology, um, but they had people in the field who needed disconnected capabilities. Um, they needed disconnected capabilities on multiple devices, multiple platforms, I should say, Android, Windows, um, Apple. Um, and they didn't want multiple solutions. They wanted one. We want one thing that does it for all of us, and it has to be disconnected. So that was their problem, because they had all these people in the field doing this work, and that was really their problem. So, okay, we've got that. We've got, we start with that problem. So we asked them about visioning. To tell us more about what that looks like. You know, what are they doing? Well, we've got these staff. They're in the field. They're doing this work. They're doing data collection. Great. Why aren't you using Collector? Well, we love Collector. Collector is wonderful, but it only does 70% of what we really need. OK, great. So what do you really need? Well, we've got this group that are doing this type of work, and they need their own custom forms. They're doing data collection. They need custom forms as well. Oh, and they have to work offline. OK. These guys over here, they have to have a measurement tool and they have, they have to have, um, they have a couple of other different tools. I, I mean, I won't give you all the, all the details. But the point was, different groups within their organization were out in the field, disconnected. They needed different tools. Collector did 70% of what they needed, collect data collection. But they needed other tools to work in an offline mode. So that was, that was what they came to us with. And, and we said, well, OK, tell us what that might look like. And, and they're familiar with Web App Builder. They like Web App, but we love Web App Builder. And they said to us, we kind of want Web App Builder that's offline enabled. So any of us can take our, any device, a phone, uh, a tablet, a phablet, a two-in-one, get out in the field and use this technology to, in a disconnected way to get their work done. And we've got different groups that need to use the application. These, these group have these type of widgets. This group have this type of widgets. So, okay, that sounds good. We, we've got a clear idea on the problem. We've got a clear idea on what you envisage it's going to look like. And this visioning thing is super important because you've got to get the customer to tell you or the, the internal customer or whoever it is you're talking to to tell you what they think. And to, to, together you explore, once you define that problem, what, what they're really wanting to do. So if, if Charlie's out there doing that, what does he want to do next? Oh, he's going to go down the road and do this. You understand the process that the people in the field are going to do. You can then start thinking in more detail about the data. You thought it was going to go on to the solution. The data. So Kerry and I were just, I asked Kerry a minute ago, so tell me about a day in the life for you. And 
what did you say, Kerry, about that? You didn't give me a percentage of time spent with data, but it's an enormous amount of your time spent with data. And we all know how important data is. You know, garbage in, garbage out. But so often, that's the forgotten piece. You know, great, we need this mobile application. Have you got the data? Well, yeah, of course, data's out. Data's free, data's out there, it's fine. No problem, data's everywhere, isn't it? Good data, complete data, accurate data, all the data you need. It's not so easy as that, and we all know that. Uh, and, but we have to guide people around the data. And we find, particularly before we started thinking about process, as I'm describing here, that um, it's the forgotten piece. You, you, you give someone an estimate for some work, for example, in our case, what do you mean we've got to spend like money on data? Well, isn't, doesn't they just come with it? Isn't it? It's everywhere. Data's everywhere. I mean, how much of your time do you spend with data? But it's that education process that I'm kind of describing here. Problem, visioning, okay, let's talk data. We still haven't got to the application the person wants. Note that. And, then, and sometimes you have these conversations, why are we talking about all this other stuff? I just, want to, I just want this application. But without these other pieces, you're not going to successfully deliver, we argue, the proper solution and additional solutions beyond that. So data, 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 data. Huh. Um, so we get, to the, we get to the solution. We've understood all those pieces, we get to the solution. In, in this particular case, the data um, isn't a problem. Um, it's, we, in the, the, the methodology we used was to use ArcGIS Online. They had ArcGIS Online. They were very familiar with ArcGIS Online. We helped them complete the data sets they needed, did some data cleanup for this particular customer. Um, wonderful. Um, so what do we do for a solution for these guys? We decided a web solution was best. Um, why web? Well, web is cross-platform, cross-device. You can pull up a browser on, on any mobile device, any PC, any laptop, and you can load a web application. So web time, I mean, Andy Gupp, I don't know if Andy's in, in here at the moment, but uh, Andy's going to do a talk on JavaScript. The web technology's come a long, long, long way. It's incredible. I mean, I, I get a bit confused when I talk about WebGIS, because I'm always thinking WebGIS and there's WebGIS. It's kind of... But, um, but web, is, web has come a long way. Um, there are amazing things you can do now with web technology. 3D has just been released in the newest JavaScript API with, with the ArcGIS. Um, so web technology has come a long way. Web technology is incredibly flexible because it does run across any device, any, any platform. Um, offline, um, which was an important piece of this component, is now in place. So we can do offline on the web. So the same kind of workflows you get with Collector. And, and there's good arguments that collect, a collector fits a certain place in the, in the mobile world. It's wonderful. But if for this particular client, collector didn't work. So we've built out a web solution for these guys, which um, is offline enabled. So it's, it's, it's really, think about uh, web app builder, offline enabled. That's what we've built. Um, we used the frame. Actually, again, Andy Gupps built a really nice offline library. We took that as our base. We took a, an open source framework, which is almost identical to app build, um, web app builder, and we we integrated them together. So that was the solution um, that we came up with. And, and it fitted what the client wanted because we'd done all the due diligence up front to deliver something that they wanted. Um, we continue down the path. We've actually, we've actually sort of productized it, called it App Smart for ArcGIS um, because we think it's such a compelling solution. But that was successful because we went through the process step by step by step by step. We didn't start with this is the application to move from there. We step right back. So it was a very successful implementation. We do it on all things. We have, we're working with a huge utility who have a particular, they're very experienced GIS people, but they have a particular problem they need us to solve. We walk them through this process. We don't, we don't presume anything. We say, okay, let's sit down and talk about the problem. Let's sit down and talk data. And it's amazing what you find out from any people who, are, who want you to hold their hand and know nothing to those that know a lot. Having a framework in place to step people through is, is huge. We always say refine and repeat. Take that solution, extend it, build it out, repeat the process. So, okay, great. I came to you with 15 problems in my head and you told me I've got to focus on one. We focus on one, you've taken me down the path, you've delivered something successful for me. What about problem two? Go, go through the same process again. What's the problem? What's the visioning? 
Or is, have you got the data for it? What's the solution? Just keep repeating the cycle. And uh, you know, I, I think with, within our organisation, when we when we start engaging with any with any with any company, any any uh, city, any state, we follow the same path. You know, we we know there are problems that need to be solved. We we very systematically walk through this process and get to the end end result successfully. So we don't jump in in the middle. We start at the top all the way through each time. Um, so I, I suggest to everybody here, if, in within your organisations, if you're external, internal clients have problems or come to you for it, that they, they need GIS, go to them with a, with a systematic process. I mean, that's how we do it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's a process that will help you guide them down, hold their hand to a solution. One other thing I forgot, I should have mentioned this earlier. So GIS people, we're really valuable. We're super valuable. Um, if you sit on your bums and just make maps within your organizations, you're not helping your organization or yourself. I'm going to use Matt again as an example. Matt works for a real estate company. Um, we were at college together. I, I said to Matt, same as to Kerry, so what's a day in the life for you? He says, I walk around trying to find problems. I sit down and I listen to what people are talking about, and I try and find problems that I know we can solve. He's looking for problems. He's not looking to where he can chuck technology in. He's looking for a problem, and then he's engaging with those people to solve that problem. That's what we should be doing. We're not selling something per se. We're trying to help people do their jobs better. That's what we can do. That's how we can be more successful. Having a systematic process and going out to look for problems to solve within all your organizations. Timbuk3. Oh, man. So you can see I've got no hair. I remember Timbuk3. Remember that song? I think that's the future of, 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 of our world. I mean, it's just it's such a bright future. I think we're in a time of real change. It's really exciting. It's kind of confusing. Um, but, oh, my gosh, we're, we're going. We are important, finally. That's me. That's my number. That's my email address. Read my blog. Thanks for having me. Appreciation for being our keynote. I want to give you a little gift. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> And I just want to say thank you again for everyone for being here. And there is a break up until 10 o'clock. And feel free to get some beverages and snacks out there. And sessions start at 10. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs>